Welcome to 032 Conversations, the podcast where we talk to creatives, see how they live, and how they do their work. I'm your host, Carlo Villarica. Before I introduce the next guest of the podcast, I just like to note that this is officially the seventh episode of 032 Conversations. Cue audience clapping. Yay. Well, um, originally I committed to six episodes just to see how it goes. And, you know, so far so good. It seems like I'm enjoying it. Uh, and we got a few listeners. We hit 500 listeners for the month of March. Not bad for a first-time podcast. So it uh, looks like we're going to keep going. And then, um, you know, if you guys have any... Uh, suggestions as to who should be on the podcast, send us a message, you know, we're all over, um, you know, I read our email, I may not reply all the time, but I read the email at info at 032.com, or, you know, just tag us on Instagram or on Twitter at 032 Cebu, so that's 032 in numbers, and then, uh, yeah, just let us know if you know anybody that deserved to be or that you would like to hear on the podcast. Uh, our next guest is Ray Cabradilla. Uh, she's one of the main photographers at Rainbow Fish. She also happens to work with 032 with us on, uh, on, our, on our client work. So I see her like once or twice a month and then we shoot stuff. She's done beautiful work for Rainbow Fish. You should see some of her photos. She's really incredibly talented. She's a talented photographer. Quick trivia. Rainbow Fish shot our wedding. Steph and I got Rainbow Fish to shoot our wedding uh, four years ago. Unfortunately, Ray was not part of the group yet, but they do great work. And they've continued that... uh, the tradition of great work ever since. And then uh, right now, as we speak, Rainbow Fish is one of the premier uh, wedding photographers in Cebu. Now, one of the challenges of doing a podcast and then uh, talking about a very visual concept like photography is, you know, you don't see it. So, in the show notes, I will be posting links to works that we're going to be talking about, and then maybe even a photo or two. So make sure to look at the show notes as well. And in fact, you can find all the show notes at uh, 032.com slash podcast of all of the episodes that we've produced before. Yeah, so before before I uh, let you listen to the conversation, if this is your first time listening to 032 Conversations, please subscribe. Uh, we're on iTunes, Spotify, or any of your uh, any of your favorite podcast apps. All right, let's get to it. Here's Ray Cabradilla and Zero Three Two Conversations. Just decided to take videos. It wasn't planned. I was just really just bringing my camera, and I thought it was fun, and it was one of the rare moments that we're all together with my friends. So. And I think that was the time that one of my friends, who was based in Manila, uh, that was the time that she came back home. Mm. So we hung, we hung out. And yeah, then, for a little context, this yeah. is like a video of like it's like a it's them hanging out in the car, and then dancing. Yeah. They get on the road in front of traffic, <laughs> you know, and it's fun. It's like a fun little video that. I was so surprised. <laughs> it's out there. I know. I I actually tried to bring it down, but I can't. I don't know how. Oh, why? Because it's an old account. So. Oh, you don't have access to it. No, no, because I I recently found out that YouTube changed their whatever system, and then I I just can't log into my old account anymore. Really? Yeah, I. I I saw some people like forums talking about it. No, they couldn't access. Oh, why do you want to take it down? Because 
<laughs> one of my friends wanted me to. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> After a long time. <laughs> yeah, but I, yeah. Oh, it's a fun video though. <laughs> like I thought it was like, but anyway, which is which I which I'll get to because um, <laughs> it's clear that you uh, obviously now you know for there's gonna be an intro and then I'm gonna explain a little bit of who you are to the audience. But this is Ray, and then you're a Hi. photographer, yeah. Right? So. Obviously, it, uh, looking online, it seems like you were dabbling on quite a <laughs> bit on quite a on some other things before. Well, I guess you went to photography, but were you were you looking at were you doing other things before photography, like dabbling in the stuff or like so the video wasn't really planned, yeah, so I may have mistook it. <laughs> um, like, there's a video of you singing online also. Really? Yeah. Which one? <laughs> oh, it's also in your YouTube page. It's like you and two other girls with a ukulele. Oh yeah, that, those were my friends in the vi same video. <laughs> Amo ba? Yeah. Mm. Uh, yeah. So were you into it? Did you were you into other things before getting into photography? Well, I got into photography in college. So back then I was just more into um, school activities. Singing, we joined competitions like singing. Uh, I also did sports, like um, I played tennis. Um, I won first. In tennis? <laughs> yeah, during oh. high school. I tried, it was, I think, my third year trying out tennis. The first two years, I was second. And the, my last year, I finally got first. I'm so happy. And after that, like, I decided to just stop oh. <laughs> playing altogether, yeah. And then um, I was also into art. Yeah, so I guess that's. What do you mean arts? What do you mean arts? What does uh, that mean? It's so I broad. Did painting. I used to draw. Uh, what else? I was just. I felt like I was. You know, more creative. Uh, with other things, I just thought nah, I was. I like creating things, like ah. drawing or, or just basically painting. You like creating things. When you say creating things, so how did that get? Does that make sense? Because obviously, photography is a sort of creating yeah. thing. In, in, a, in effect, in fact, the whole show is about creatives, people who create something out of nothing. Yeah. Right? So how did that get? So you were into all those things before, and then somehow you found photography in college. How did how did that come about? Uh, with that, I that was also not planned. Um, I my dad actually bought a camera, and I thought it was interesting. So I tried. I started tinkering with it. You remember what camera? Yeah, a uh, Nikon D five thousand. I still have it. Oh yeah, is that like their Nikon? You shoot Canon, deba? Right? Yeah, yeah. Oh okay. Wow, I can I can ask you about that. <laughs> or like. That's the entry level Nikon SLR. Yeah, right? yeah. Okay. So again, yeah, and then he bought a camera. Bought a camera and then I started playing around with it. And I think that was the time uh, uh like Flickr was still very, you know, also. Mm. And yeah, you have a Flickr account. Yeah. <laughs> He's talking me. It's <laughs> <laughs> my job. Yeah. Uh so yeah. Um, I think I talked to one of my friends who basically taught me the like, foundation of photography. Uh, who was this? Uh, a schoolmate. Okay. And she doesn't shoot now at Nakayo? No. Mm. I'm not sure. We're not really keeping in touch. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, it was back in college. so, And it's actually a guy. He taught oh. me... Uh, you know, the three main things that you should know about photography, which is uh, the ISO, aperture, and um, the shutter speed. Yeah. So he explained to me that these are things like um, when you're dancing, when you're in the dance floor. <laughs> oh, a, okay, I, I I'm so curious to see I know. Uh, well, he explained that the dance floor is like 
the ISO, which is the base. You set it beforehand. You set it in your camera. And then the rest are the two things that you play around with when you're already shooting, which is the aperture and the shutter speed. Mm -hmm. The he said dance floor. Yeah, the dance floor. So the shutter, shutter speed and the aperture uh -huh. are the dancers on the dance floor. So th those are the two things that you just you know. You know, I I mean I've heard this. I've heard, you know I'm also into photography, but so you hear about how people explain the ISO, the aperture, and the shutter speed. For people who don't know. Um, Aperture is basically how big the hole is in the lens. The shutter speed is how fast it will take. And the ISO is um, how much light is absorbed by the sensor, yeah. I think. Yeah. yeah. But I've never heard it explained <laughs> that way. So it's like uh, those three elements are, are, are in, in a dance. So the two aperture and shutter speed, the two dancers, and then the ISO is the dance floor. Yeah, that's why yeah, I, no. it was interesting and it, it stuck with me. <laughs> mm. Yeah. So that's how you that's how you learn. So you had this friend who taught you in college. You got first you got the Nikon Nikon from your dad. Yeah. Why didn't you just push through with Nikon? That's so weird because like, you know, usually when people choose a camera, especially if it's a camera that has like uh, interchangeable lenses. Mm. They just stick to it. Why yeah. the change to Canon? Well, um, I I just noticed that Canon has a softer feel to it and it's warmer. Mm. So I, I like that, you know, uh, setting. So that's <laughs> actually my dad. My dad bought that for himself, and then when he when he found out that I kept using it, he kind of like. You know, he, I don't know, he, he was kind of annoyed that I was using it. <laughs> it was his toy, right? Uh -huh. So he bought another Nikon, uh -huh. and then which I played around with again. <laughs> and then later on, I told him, can you buy me a Canon? And then um, I'll just pay you. <laughs> and I told I, I actually made a presentation. You know, oh, yeah, you had to sell the idea yeah, to your parents. Yeah, I, I did. Um, because it's, you know, it's not... Actually, cheap. <laughs> oh no, you yeah, know, like it's um, really expensive. I I actually think that's the right thing to do. Is for for example, me. Um, you know, when I when I was in high school, I wanted an electric guitar. Ah. And then we had an acoustic in the house. And then my dad told me, you know, we'll we'll buy you an electric guitar if you learn this song. Mm. And then the song was uh, Blackbird by the Beatles. Mm. It's like, and I was learning back then. It's a very difficult song. Mm. Right. So I spent like, you know, every waking hour trying to play that song. And then I want, because I wanted the electric guitar when I was starting. So my skills were very uh, limited. I could not play it at all. Mm. So it maybe took a year or two before I could get, before I could play it. Really? Yeah. So I had to really learn. And then I, yeah, like you, I presented oh, okay. to my parents. And then that's when they bought me uh, my first electric guitar. Mm. It's more like it, it, it forces you to uh, invest in the skill mm. without putting the money out, I guess. Is that what you did? Like, what did you present to your, to your parents? Uh, not so sure. Uh, I think I just really wanted the camera and start uh, taking photos. Mm -hmm. But you had a, a small body of work to show for, for it from the Nikon yeah. experience. Yeah, I did. And I also presented, like, okay, these are... Uh, the photographers that I look up to, oh. and um, <laughs> I can't believe I did that, <laughs> but yeah, it wasn't fun. And then I told them, uh, these are the things that I like to create. And back then, I was into fine art photography, right? So. Oh yeah, I'll get to that because uh, I read your blog also. Blog? What is this? I don't yeah, know. there's a ray, coveredilia.wordpress.com. It's like oh three posts. 
Oh, okay. <laughs> you do realize when you put stuff on the internet, it stays there forever unless you delete it, okay. right? Okay. <laughs> now I know. No, but like, see, like um, there was a shot where there, there was a girl, uh, she's playing the violin, and mm. then you see the, what do you call that, the paper with the notes yeah. flying all the around. Music the music sheets flying all around. And, you know, and then I, I think that's something that you used to... Yeah, uh, it was back then. That's what I I saw that everyone was doing. They were making, they were just creating uh, photo manipulations. That's ah, that's, that's what, what you, you call, call it. it. Yeah, okay. and then you make it into, you know, like a painting. And I really liked it because I I had to, you know, um, really conceptualize. Like, okay, what's my next? Uh, Artwork, I would call it an artwork. Um, so, photo, so I had different themes, and I also I, I really liked that it was very. I don't know. Um, moody. <laughs> I don't know. There, this, I I wanted to create a story in, in just photo. one photo. Yeah, which is, uh, what did you call it again? Photo manipulation. Yeah. So it's like. Uh, you took a photo and then I guess you took a whole bunch of other photos yes. and then you put it yeah, together stitched somehow. It together. You stitched it together. Yeah, which they which is very different from what you do right now. Yeah. No? Do you wanna go back to doing something like that? I always do, but then when I start doing it again, I get frustrated because it takes a lot of time. Mm. And when you're in the moment when uh when I'm when I'm, when I'm in the moment of you know the whole thing like being inspired by the, doing it, uh, I I'm really into it. Like for example, there was this time um, when I shot it the day before, I had to edit it right away. If I don't, I'm gonna lose all the inspiration, all the whatever I had in mind. Mm -hmm. So once I'm in that. You know, I'm in my zone. I work on it for many hours you know, until I finish it. Ah, because if you stop, but then the momentum's like, gone. Yeah. Mm. Which I'll get back into because I do want to talk about kind of inspiration. Now. But what was your first, so when you were learning to shoot, what was your first, uh, so I guess, were you, uh, you know, when I was learning to shoot, I had a Canon S90, it's a little point and shoot. Yeah. And then, you know, naturally my first subjects were, I don't know, like leaves, <laughs> you know, uh, like nature, or, yeah, or, or yeah, or like my niece, you know, uh, that sort of thing. And then I, I don't, um, you know, those aren't, I don't consider those like real shoots. Those are me just like walking around, taking whatever I can, yeah. right? Yeah. So what was your first real uh, shoot. First real shoot. Yeah, oh, like my first real shoot, for example. When I say real, like you know, like you know, you, ha you have a you client. Ask your friend, not just a client. Oh, okay. Doesn't have to be a client. This, All right. some, sometimes we just never get there. Like, I've never had a client. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> no? What I'm saying is like, you know, you asked your friend, hey, let's come together and shoot. This like my first real one was when we started at zero three two. I didn't even have a camera yet, mm. so I borrowed SLR, Sony SLR from my yeah. mom. I hated it, <laughs> but but uh, it, we started zero three two and we got invited to cover like a Miss Cebu. Mm, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. So like everybody, everybody was. Uh, when people cover Miss Cebu, usually the photographers are all in one place, facing the stage, and they all have these like huge ass lenses yeah. and then we had our like entry level DSLRs with basic lenses and then we were like there's no way we're gonna be able to get the same photos as those guys mm. so we decided to it was like we were uh, two or three of us three of us we decided to walk around in the uh, around uh, Miss Cebu mm. so we would go backstage yeah we would take backstage photos oh, okay. like really dark and grainy and yeah, gritty yeah. and then it, it it 
it came out really well, actually. Yeah. Well, I mean, for us, like at the time, I was like, oh my gosh, this is so cool. It was like a really fun experience. Uh, you know, you're, it, it, it was sent something that other people were doing. You know, anyway, so that was that's what I felt like was my first shoot. You know? mm. And then I did it with my friends. Do you remember your first one? I can't remember. I just remember that um, I started with, uh, you know, the photo challenge, the 365 ah. days. Oh, yeah. So you took a photo every day. I tried for as long as I could. You, you posted it? Yeah, I did um, on my Facebook. I think. Ah, so it's still there. Uh, I didn't, I didn't like stalk you that. I'm not, sure. that I'm not sure. Or it's in Flickr. Ah, okay. Yeah, and then um, aside from that, I think I started with my cousin. Hmm. I I took a photo. I think I did a levitation shoot. Ah, okay. Yeah. So I. Oh, so even with the 365 days, you were still doing the photo manipulations. I'm not so sure anymore where I inserted the photo manipulations if it was during that time that I was doing the 365 days. But maybe, yeah, maybe in between. Hey, would you say that like uh, doing things like that made you a much better photographer? Yeah, I think so. Uh, I kept practicing. I also, one thing I would do really is to um, watch videos uh, and also just look at other people's work. Not exactly like copy it but be inspired by it so I was really just following people and their work how they they came about it so I also tried experimenting and you know I think one of my favorite uh, a conceptual shoot or you know photo manipulation was of my friend and her past lover oh awkward <laughs> yeah but then um uh so it was for a love exhibit. I actually joined a photography club before. Mm. So it was timely that you know, I wanted to do something uh, uh, conceptual. So I did that. I thought of this girl facing her boyfriend or that time, but then he was a ghost. Oh, I, I saw that. You saw that. I yeah. think, yeah, I'm pretty sure I saw that. <laughs> so I, I don't know. When I... Really, Look back at it. I don't really know what went on in my head that time. Why I chose the guy to be the ghost? Because usually it's the girl. You know, like um, I don't know. For me, I feel like it's the girl uh, haunting the guy. What? <laughs> I don't know. You think? I don't know that. Well, it's different um, now that I think about it. I remember Casper. Casper is a guy. So. Okay. <laughs> so you're not sure now what went back, why why you chose the guy to be the ghost? No, I, I, I don't know why I wanted him to be the ghost. But then it came to, you know, reality. They're actually not together anymore, right? <laughs> so he's now a ghost in her. So it's your fault. <laughs> it's Maybe your fault I predicted that, uh, it. <laughs> the guy ghosted the girl. <laughs> but yeah, I liked it because I, I realized at that uh, time that I was editing the photos that uh, it's not easy editing it. I, I thought that it was more like problem solving. Mm. So I was thinking, okay, where do I put her hand and then his face? Because I actually took um, two different photos, right? Yeah. So it's the girl first and then the guy. But I made her do an action where uh, his face would overlap her hand. Mm -hmm. And for that to look real, I had to make it you know. For context, we're going to put the photo. Hopefully, Ray will allow me to put the photo on the show notes. We'll put oh, it there. Okay, yeah. Yeah, sure. Yeah. So, oh, yeah. But yeah, you had to take two photos and then stitch them together somehow. Yeah. And then make the guy kind of transparent yeah. and ghost-like. Yeah. So, that's what I was saying. Now, Mark. He's transparent, so I had to make it like... Um, <laughs> I don't know how to say it. So how did you make what, it look how real? How did you even learn to do that? I guess like YouTube videos or YouTube, something. YouTube, and then I just experimented on you. Like okay, so hey, I just figured out now. Like, this works. So. Oh, okay. Let's eat sa. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, you good? Yeah.
Yeah, so we were talking about uh, how you learn to put those photo manipulations together. Mm. Diba? And then you're saying YouTube, banana. No? Uh, earlier, you mentioned that when you presented to your dad, you even showed him like photographers that you looked up to. Yeah, or, yeah. Do you remember them? Yeah, I remember a few. Um, her name is Brooke Shaden. She is based in the States, I think. Mm. <laughs> yeah. And um, she does all these photo manipulations that look like fine art paintings. Ah, so that's so, so ah, that's one of your inspirations for that. Yeah. yeah, her and it's just interesting. Really. I we could add a link to her page. So oh yeah, we'll put everything <laughs> Uh, the people that we mentioned in the pod will all be in the show notes. Right. Okay. Yeah, I'll search her on the internet. <laughs> yeah. But her style is more sometimes eerie. Mm. Makes you think, but why would she do this? Like, why would she create something like this? It's, it's interesting. And there are also some that um, are more uh, fairy tale like. Yeah, it's more dreamy. So the photo, <laughs> photo manipulations is like, uh, it's kind of like. Painting with photography. Yes. No. Bro, yes. mm. so that was back then. Mm. How about now? Are there any photographers that you. Because, I mean, at this point, you've been shooting for how many years? Uh, Do you know? I started in 2010, so eight, eight years. years now. At this oh, point, uh, I don't know if you will say it, but I can say that you do have a style, right? Yeah. There's a certain style there which is good because you know uh, as an artist that's one of the things that you try to say in the beginning everybody's emulating and imitating mm. and then at some point you have a style of your own yeah. hopefully <laughs> no i don't know it, my style changes from time to time oh, yeah it does no no like human beings <laughs> yeah, right. no but uh, do you look do you uh, today do you look up to any photographers specifically are there people that you look up to or you know yeah uh, I think it's in the email that I sent you oh yeah I didn't understand that I was like I asked you for a bio and then you sent me I didn't understand your questions <laughs> so yeah well yeah I, one of the people or yeah that I mentioned there was Shaira Luna yeah I, I, I looked I looked her up I'm I think I'm gonna follow her on Instagram yeah she's really good and she's like uh tagged as the gifted child because she was actually in uh, the pro mill uh, commercial back when she was younger mm. she was really smart though good like yeah and and she she dreamed of being a doctor now and then all of a sudden she just went <laughs> she went into photography and made it her career she's really good she's really Those, good yeah she does like what commercial work now where it seems work. yeah but Really nice, and she's also very versatile, like with her style. Oh yeah, you could. I noticed. Yeah, let's talk about her for a while. I noticed, yeah. like, she her, she has photos which are very um, polished, right? Like mm. really nice and bright, and right. you know, like really, you know, it, it deserves to be in a magazine. Yeah. But the more interesting ones for me are the are the. Uh, I've used this word already, the grittier <laughs> ones, the more... She has some... I mean, I'm not looking at it right now, so yeah. I'm going to have a hard time describing it, but she has some photos that are more off the cuff, mm. that seem to be more improvised, mm. no? Which is something that I personally like yeah. more, no? Yeah, I think those are the shots that I like, too. Uh, it's not what you usually see, and I, don't know, I just like her treatment, her photos. Uh, editing treatment. Mm. So now that we're talking about like a photography work, about, or, yeah. you know, some you, know, so you do this as a job. This is your main job. Yeah. How, this is through. Um, yeah, primarily most of it is. How, okay, how did you get to? How was your? How was? Do you remember the first time you were paid? Yeah. As a photographer. Well, I'm not sure first, but you, but um, I think. Because I was showing work online, uh, one of my my friends, one of my friends asked me to do her her brother's prenup 
Although mm. I, I don't think I was paid for that, but it was like one of my. It seemed like a. It felt like a paid job. Yeah, because I didn't know the person. I, you know, he was not really directly connected to me. Just my friend. But yeah, it, it, it was interesting. So and how did she dis- She 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 decided that you could do it because you were already sharing your work online, and obviously it was good enough for her to recommend to her uh, brother. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, prenup again. So, <laughs> so you know that's that something was way back. So yeah. it doesn't really go on for kind of all glam. <laughs> oh. Yeah, but you know I knew the ba- the the basics. So I, I I shot their prenup together with another friend who was also interested in photography. Mm-hmm. For my first paid job, I really cannot remember. So how did you how did you get connected with Rainbow Fish? Uh, well, I guess, uh, okay, let's backtrack. Um, actually, my, my dad joined this, or he saw this class online that uh, taught video editing. Oh, okay. And then, so, he told me to join. I didn't join the class that he, he attended, so I, I took another one, but it was a, a one-on-one um, uh, workshop. Thing. Mm-hmm. So I got to know this guy. Uh, his name is Hans Florentino. He's doing really good right now. Um, okay. Uh, so yeah, he's I a photographer. Know, he's a filmmaker now. Oh, okay. Um, he also takes photos, but that was his main work, I guess. Um, editing photos, uh, editing videos. Mm. So I, I learned that for a time, <laughs> and then he his friends. He's good friends with um, this photography group. That they they he found out that they were looking for an editor, so he recommended me to them, and that's how I started with uh, my first like real uh, job. job, yeah, in photography. So I got in that group, um, maybe worked for almost a year, and then I decided to go back to school. So. Yeah, and then later on, I, I realized that I wanted to go back into photography again, and and uh, I figured that I could also do school at the same time, mm. right? And then from then, uh, I think how I got into Rainbow Fish was because uh, my other friend recommended me to join their group, and and. I noticed they had really good work, so I was interested, yeah. And then I've been with them for almost five years now. Rainbow Fish. Yeah, with Rainbow Fish. Mm, yeah, I think we missed you when we when Steph and I got married. I know. <laughs> <laughs> that must have been like right after, huh? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, a few months after. A few um, months after, right? Well, you were married in 2013? Let me check my ring. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> 2014. 14. For January 2014. Oh, so then I started 2014. <laughs> ah, okay. <laughs> yeah. Ah, so mga four years. Four, four years. years with Rainbow I, Fish. Yeah, four years. So I, it feels longer, one good. <laughs> well, you, you know what I noticed, ba? So your dad keeps co- popping up. Did he have some sort of artistic. Uh, um, you know, obviously he dabbled in it, or I don't know. I don't know anything about your dad. Yeah. Like, but did he have a big? It's. Uh, it seems like he, he's had a big role in your uh, choice to become a photographer. In a sense, not only did he get you your first camera. Yeah. But like, uh, it's you know he even pushed you. Not maybe pushed is too strong a word, but like he showed <laughs> you the way. There was like some sort of. Yeah. Um. Well. Just to give you context, like I don't like for me, for example, uh, our family is very uh, uh, creative and artistic. Mm. But my direct family, my parents, were not. So sila, they were always, you know, my dad's a businessman. Mm. My mom worked in the travel agency, so she was traveling a lot. And then my dad was. Uh, you know, he was he was into business. He had a stock brokerage, and then mm-hmm. we were not a creative uh, 
you know, as parents, they were great parents. Huh? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But like as parents, they did not, they did not uh, show us, uh, you know, uh, the sense of art. It, that one came from my grandma. She was, she was a dancer. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think anybody in our family was a photographer. You know, you know what I'm saying? I, I didn't have these role models to look up to yeah. in terms of, uh, uh, well, I did. I mean, I, you know, my mom, my, my grandma was, no, but like directly, like my parents, wala, mm. no. So it sounds like your dad had that sort of sense in him or had that sort of like, uh, can you talk about well, that? I'm, I'm not so sure, though. <laughs> I think he just dabbled into photography because. It was the in thing, like people were just mm. into DSLRs that time. Oh, yeah, I don't there was know, a time yeah, where everybody right? had a DSLR. They were just hanging it on their necks, like I know. <laughs> inside the malls, everywhere. <laughs> but yeah, that was the time. And I'm not so sure if he's the artistic ah, kind of okay. guy. Uh, Maybe more technical. Like he would he would read about it, watch videos. And mm. One thing about him though is that he really pushed me. He, he he told me to just finish what I've started. <laughs> like he he was telling me not to be, you know, uh, go for your passion. He was not stopping me at all. So he encouraged you. Yeah. Mm. Okay. So uh, let's get to to uh, Rainbow Fish. So obviously you've been with Rainbow Fish now for like four years. Yeah. You must have shot like a hundred plus weddings <laughs> at this point. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> right. So I, I'm curious more than anything, no, because uh, you did an interview with us like a few months ago. I think our, our, one of our writers contacted you, yeah, and then yeah. you said something like the, the the weddings have like four parts. Oh um, uh, yeah. What That's were those me. parts again? So. Uh, we start with the preparation. That's when you know the bride and groom, uh, well, the bride does her makeup, and then we prepare stuff. And after that, here comes the ceremony, and then we do. After the ceremony, we take formal portraits of the couple, and then the ceremony, like yeah, they get married. They okay. get married, okay. of course. <laughs> yeah, and then after the well, we call it the post nup Victorious. After that, we then proceed to the reception. Mm -hmm. So those are basically your four parts. Okay, and then every wedding is really different, right? Yeah. Is there like a? And then I'm sure like there were there are stories of like stressful <laughs> oh, weddings. <yeah. laughs> Definitely. Does do anything come to mind or like a weird story or a fun story or a stressful story from a wedding? Without naming names, of course. No? But yeah. I'm just curious. In terms of like the photography sense, like like uh, I remember there was a photographer and he was saying yeah yeah and yeah this this uh, this couple they hired like two or three uh, photographers oh, okay. yeah. and then so uh, so tulo upat mi kabuk bay and then we're just trying to <laughs> find space. And then, you know, so I ended up just shooting the behind the scenes oh, <laughs> the, of, the, of, the, of the wedding. So, like, it was, I was shooting the photographer, shooting the, the, the bride. The bride. Like, so, I don't know. Really, you talked about it. Well, yeah, I, I share the, ex the same experience. Uh huh. Oh, like that? That exact experience? Yeah, like uh, last year, I think. Um, they hired, they basically hired us as official photographer and then someone else you know uh offered his services as well so they took it now we ha they have two photographers in their wedding and you know with that uh you're just getting into each other's way yeah i mean for us we we're okay we we're chill and all but cute honestly <laughs> you know it was just annoying that there are a lot of people in the room like i felt like it was more of a production than, uh, you know, a wedding, mm -hmm. and that's what we we try not to impose like on our clients. We try as much as possible be out of their way and and try to make it as 
you know, comfortable for them. Well, that's actually what I appreciate from the. It's loud. That's what I appreciate from the rainbow fish style. And then this was even before you were mm. along, no? Because uh, when Steph and I got married, I remember like I would look at. I was tasked. One of my few jobs <laughs> was <laughs> I was to look for the videographer and the photographer. Mm. <laughs> so I just you know searched online and saw which ones were. I got a list basically from Steph. Mm-hmm. And then she she said, yeah, these are all the photographers. Well, not all, but like these are the ones you know, that seem to keep popping up. Mm. And I looked at each of their websites, uh, their Instagram. And then what, what for me personally, now this is a personal preference because there are other people who like different things. Yeah, yeah. But for me personally, like I like the fact that the photos didn't look posed. Mm. No? So it seemed more... Uh, Authentic. Yeah, authentic, well, yeah, authentic. Uh, authentic is like a nice word, but, well, but like, you know, <laughs> you know, no, but like, uh, what I'm saying is like, it seems more uh, candid. Candid, no? yeah. No, but of, of course, you know, I mean, having been shot by rainbow fish, there were like, we were really post. There were some oh, that yeah, were posting you, that, but just the fact, like, you see in the pictures, like, people are laughing. It seems like people are having a good time. No? Now that's just my personal preference because I also do know people who couples who want the whole like I'm a superstar or you know like I am being shot. This is a <laughs> magazine cover type uh, shoot. Mm-hmm. Which nothing wrong with that. No. But that's not something at least to me from the outside looking in. Murug, it seems to me like you guys are more have that more candid uh, style. Yeah, no? approach, yeah. Uh, of course, uh, oh, that's what we're known for, really. Like when I asked uh, one of the one of the coordinators in the industry, she mentioned that you know when she talks to to her clients, she usually just gives them a list. Okay, these are the photographers here, and then but they all have different styles. So she packed us us. The, the group that does more candid shots, if you want more candid shots, more moments, you pick Rainbow Fish. Mm. If you want something else, like editorial, you choose this other group. So, yeah, we're, we're glad that, you know, people uh, think of us as in that way. But, uh, we want to focus really more on the moments, the reactions of the guests, the family. It's more documentary type. Although we still put in um, form of photos, of course. Just for your keepsake. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think that's smart, man, because um, the, the, sometimes I feel like the mistake with not just photographers now, like everybody, is they try to please everybody so like you have a certain style and then i feel like this would be a mistake for example like let's say okay you're known for your casual uh uh looking at those fun moments that sort of thing and then once you're pegged that and then you say no but we can also do these editorial photos and here i'll show you all my editorial so it confuses the 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 prospect it yeah. confuses the couple. Now, it, it, and then similar with like, let's say even restaurants. Okay. Uh, there's some restaurants that just try to be everything. Yeah. <laughs> diba? And then, so what happens is they're not serving anybody in the one because as a customer, you come in and then you don't know what you're going to get. Mm. Diba? So what are you known for? Let's say for the restaurant, like, are you known for like your, I don't know, are you... So, I mean, this is going to be a bad example, but let's say for whatever, like uh, name a fancy restaurant, blah, 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 but they also serve diner food. Uh, I mean, <laughs> diba? so okay. in, in that sense, ba? so uh, I feel like that's a mistake with a lot of people where they try to please everybody. Mm. You know, what happens when you try to please everybody is that you just don't please anybody <laughs> anymore. So I was, I was happy to hear that you're mm. sticking to that yeah, but of course, I think um, through the years, we've also experimented a lot. Mm. I, I don't know if you've seen our recent work, like, we've also, 
uh, you know, shot weddings with, um, with with couples who wanted to be more mellow, more artistic. So we add that uh, in our work as well. Like it's not, I, it, actually, it, it just depends on the co- couple. On the couple. Because, yeah. But we put our main, you know, work out there, and then we also try to to uh, give in to their requests. Like, for example, Kato, like we're known for candid shots, but they also want some editorial work. Yeah. But, but we don't post that as much. We just give it to them. Mm. Yeah, because the uh, in a way you stick to your brand. Yeah. Uh, yeah, because I remember a few days, uh, a few months ago, you showed me. Wow, when we were having a shoot, and then uh, <laughs> your friend was having a shoot also at the same time, and there was this couple. They were like, they were that was so cool. Katong, they were uh, you were showing me pictures on your phone. Uh, that that one of your rainbow fish photographers was on a shoot like at that moment in time, and yeah, it yeah, was like yeah. they were dressed up in like Roman. Oh yeah. Like the gladiator. <laughs> Yeah. Feel. Yeah, they yeah. went up to the temple of Leia. Yeah, yeah. And that was so cool. Yeah, he was like a big, big white guy. <laughs> <laughs> Looked like a Roman. You yeah, know, that was fun. That was fun. Yeah. yeah. Are those out? No. <laughs> <laughs> We'd like to put it out for a while. I'm not so sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, because yeah. of course the of course the yeah. you know the, the We also want to stick to our branding. Although it's really cool though. Oh no, exactly. I know. Well, you can do it, ba, but Mona, you. We are flexible at the same time. We also want to stick to our own brand. Yeah. Yes. You know. Bitaw. Oh, which I I totally agree. No. Because we also don't want to limit ourselves to just stick to one style all mm-hmm. the time. That's why, uh, as photographers, I um I learned ba, na, you just have to keep growing, keep improving. Okay. A lot of people are doing this na okay, what else can we do to improve? Yeah. So that's why if you notice we don't have well, we still have the basic standard shots, but we try to yeah, get out of the comfort zones and really look at other perspectives. Oh yeah, you got you're always pushing boundaries because if you just keep doing the same right. thing over and right. over, at some point there's no growth yeah. anymore. You get burned out, you're you, you just we're not inspired anymore, ba? Yeah, so, well, talking about, uh, ba, if you're doing the same thing over and over, or, uh, so, you, uh, you, you were saying that you can, that you guys can do other things. So, like, Rainbow Fish, primarily, it's known as, uh, wedding photography, of course. No? Yeah. But you have your own thing also. Because Rainbow Fish, you're a group. Yeah. Right? But you have your own thing also called, uh, art flavor photography. Yeah. Can you talk about that a little bit? Well, our art flavor is basically my personal, you know, photography. <laughs> um, um, so I, I shoot food for art flavor. Mm-hmm. And uh, I don't know if you get it with a name. <laughs> oh, art flavor. Okay. You know. Food photography. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think I got interested with food photography because I, I stumbled upon this famous person's blog and they showed Can you name the blog? <laughs> oh yeah, it was wait, let me I'm not so sure anymore. <laughs> but it was a blog. I think it was Camille um Camille Ko. Camille Ko. Yeah. Oh is that like a just like a fashion, fashion blogger? blogger right? Okay. So she she posts about fashion stuff. Yeah. And I was surprised to see that she was advertising for food photography ah. workshop. So when I saw it, uh, I visited their site and, and I saw their work and it was really nice. You know, I was surprised it was done here in the Philippines. Because, mm. yeah, I haven't seen... Do you remember the ever. food? Do you remember the food? Does she have a different name for the food photography workshop? Yeah, it was called uh, 50 Feasts. Okay. And then... I will try to look for it and put uh-huh. it in the show notes. Yeah, but I'm, uh, they or changed I'm, it, it now. Oh, ah, okay. <laughs> yeah. So that time, uh, I, I when I saw that, I immediately wanted to join the workshop. So I flew to Manila to just take this workshop. So it was my first official workshop that I joined, actually. I didn't join other, like, portrait and other stuff, but 
this was something I felt was worth it. Hmm. It also matched what you wanted to do, I guess. Obviously, because you felt like it was worth flying for good to Manila. Yeah. Plus, the, the, the workshop wasn't coincide. <laughs> it was also expensive, but then it was worth it. I liked it. We we worked in a group. We were we were six, and then it was an intimate workshop. Mm. So so that she can like assist us in personally, and then yeah. So so that's when when I I did my food photography. The, so when how long have you been doing the how long has art flavor photography been up? No, honestly, I'm not so sure because I I try, you know, to launch it and then after a while I I uh I get preoccupied with other things so I stop the foot. Mm -hmm. But it's there. It's there. Oh. Yeah, but mainly because I'm more focused on you know doing wedding photography. Yeah. Because it's more constant. Yeah. Yeah, but I, with, with the wedding photography, everybody. Yeah, you'd yeah, be surprised. There are a lot keeps, of people, you know, getting married. Oh yeah, I, I'm not I, surprised. <laughs> I'm not surprised. <laughs> <laughs> for some people, like what? I mean, like. Some I mean, definitely people, more people getting married than people opening up restaurants, for example. Right. Right. And then, uh, for example, us, um, we have two teams that can work in, you know, one day. One, yeah, one wedding day. So we split up the team, and then yeah, that's what I was saying. Like there are a lot of people getting married, and not only just our two teams. Like we find out there are also other groups about working on the same thing. It's like how many people get married in a day? Oh no, I'm sure there's a <laughs> lot of wedding photographers here in Cebu. I know. Right? In fact, like I found that at least at the time when I got married, uh, it was easy. In terms of like the number of wedding photographers, mm -hmm. I found that if I if I wanted a different style, I could have easily found a very good wedding photographer who could do that style here in Cebu. Mm -hmm. Cebu has a lot of really good oh, yeah. uh, wedding photographers. For like, uh, we were shooting for this one wedding, and uh, I think we were six. There were six couples at the same venue, so that oh yeah yeah. Oh. That's why I was surprised. I was like, what? <laughs> This is like a December. Uh, I think it was January. Oh, oh yeah, the January, the kind of sudden. Yeah. Yeah, it's, 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 kind of, it, it surprised me. Mm. Honestly. Oh, yeah, so I mean, of course, if, if there's one, if you compare it, so the there's a lot more wedding than the food. But the thing with the weddings is that it's also not year round, deba. Right? It is. Oh, it is now. Weddings, yeah. Oh, yeah? Yeah, there are, of course, some months na it's not as common much. Not a lot of people get married. Like, for example, August, ghost month. Diba? Oh, yeah. yeah. But then this year, since, I don't know, I think because it's 2018, eight, it has something to do with the number. So ah. August, like, there are a lot, I bet there are a lot of people who are getting married, like, August 8, 2018. Oh, probably, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, this has already come up quite a bit also in our conversation, kind of inspiration or motivation. Mm -hmm. Do you do anything to, you've touched a little bit about it already, like uh, 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 checking your boundaries, like really trying to look, look at different angles when shooting, trying different things. Mm -hmm. but. What do you? What other things do you do when you notice that you need motivation or inspiration in terms of photography? Oh well, for me, honestly, I like looking at other people's work and getting inspired by them. For others, I heard they like to look at other other things aside from photography, like they read books. And they get inspired by it, the stories they grow, and then um, also music, anything art related. Oh, so other things apart from photography, but you you like looking at other. I like looking, yeah, ah, it's I like it. Um, it inspires me, and and it pushes me also to try better. Uh, like for example, we had a wedding yesterday, and I, uh, you know, aside from taking the default photos, I tried to get into different angles and different perspectives, and I was happy about it. The, um, how do you look for the 
photographers that are that you so let's say so let's say kato like uh, let's hear a little your you lack a little inspiration motivation no are there certain photographers you keep looking back at um yeah uh there's this one wedding photography group here in the philippines that i really idolize their their work is really good mm -hmm. uh they're called mango red oh mango red yeah right so they're more into i don't know how you describe their work <laughs> i i would say it's very documentary type it's not it's not the usual cozy staged you know photography work they they push their limits here they try to do different things, new things, different angles and perspectives, and I guess that's why um, that's where they are now. Uh, I think they're pretty big here in in the Philippines. Not just here, actually, they're getting clients all over mm. the world for their style because they focus more on the story. It's very there. I think they're also. They, I mean, their treatment is more cinematic at times. Ah, okay. And it just draws you more into the photo box. You, it makes you wonder, okay, what happened here? It's not just, it's not in your face, but okay, there's a portrait of a person and a, there's like there's a story. Is it, I haven't looked at their their photos as much, but based on your description, uh, is it more like like they'll have a set of photos and then the, the set, you know how, like, how, how journalists shoot sometimes where you know the set. Sometimes not not every photo stands out, but once you see it, once you see the photos as a set, yeah, you're like, oh, it it tells a story in mm, that sense. Yeah. So they they do a lot of that. It's really it's uh, yeah. It's basically what they they focus on is uh or on photojournalism good and mm. really getting into the moment because you know i think i what my friend told me that they said that they taught him also was um that we're, we're we're being paid for our eye you know for our artistic views so it would be well um yeah we're, we're being paid for for that for our talent so it's it's good to show them a different perspective other than all the other things other photographers are showing. Mm. And uh, it's so you think for them in terms of like the wedding photography, they're doing something that's really they're different un yeah, from other very people. Unconventional, very rebellious as they would tag it. Mm -hmm. are, there, are there any other photographers that you look that uh, you, you look to for inspiration and motivation? Um. Well, yeah, I think I also mentioned to you for food, it's Photo Kitchen. Mm. Yeah, they 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 also started the blog Pepper Pepper dot ph. Oh yeah, beautiful photos. Yeah. Pepper dot ph. So and and they're really they're also really nice. Oh, you've met them. <laughs> yeah, of course, because she's she's the she's my mentor, the one who started the Fifty Feasts. Ah, workshop. okay. Right, so I joined her workshop the second time, I think, la, late last year. Mm. And, uh, yeah, I learned new things, new new techniques, and then I actually want to go back. <laughs> to the workshop. Or just, you know, be in their studio. It's just really nice, and, and I love their work. Why, what's in their studio? What's... Uh... Uh, well, they have all these props. Uh, it's just nice to work there. I guess. Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, what was that again? Um, photo kitchen. Yeah, photo kitchen. And then let's let's wind down, no, by for like with one with this one last thing. So like, let's say I wanted to get in photography you know as an occupation right because you know anybody anybody with a anybody with a phone can get into photography mm. right now right yes in a way it's great because there's so much good photography out there but also at the same time it's challenging for somebody 
who wants to do it as a job, mm-hmm. as a full time thing. No, is there anything that uh, you know that uh, let's say I wanted to get into photography as a job? What should I be doing? I think you should just start with a good portfolio. Uh, you can ask your friends, you know, to pose for you or whatever, and then um, you can show that to these different groups. Like, yeah, if, if you feel like, or uh, how do I do this? I don't. You just show a good portfolio, and then surprisingly, a lot of people will just come to you for work. Ah, if you have a good portfolio, if you put your work out there into the world. Yeah. And then maybe you can also try just asking your friend, hey, uh, you know, can I shoot your event? Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> and if they see you're good, then it, I think that's a good start for you to, to start your photography. So you, you put yourself into situations that it may, uh, especially in the beginning when you don't have a good portfolio, I guess, you put yourself in a situation where it could, it may not be a paid gig, yeah. but it will feel like, a paid gig like doing an event is you know uh it's work yeah, that's it work is. that's real work you know and if you volunteer to do it you you may not get paid because you're the one volunteering but <laughs> but you'll have something to show for it and then when if other people need like let's say event event photography work they may be able to see that and then you can come up with a rate or something yeah speaking of rates so how do you <laughs> How, do you, how does one come up with a rate for like photography? Uh, uh, you just ask around really. Oh, yeah? <laughs> yeah. So there's like a rate? Yeah. Uh-huh. There's industry rate. But and for wedding photography, the rate really is a, a little... It, it's varied. Uh, yeah, it's varied, but also at the same time. Like one of the things that Rainbow Fish has been able to do, for example, over the years... Mm is they've shown a body of work and then at least here locally in Cebu they're very well known but so if you're within a certain if you're a couple and you have a certain budget no yeah in a way the rainbow fish rate is not as I mean when you're talking to the couple and then you're getting into the details of course the couple will try to negotiate discount whatever but but it, when they're choosing the photographer, they choose Rainbow Fish more for the brand of Rainbow Fish. So the rate is almost secondary. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Uh, so like Rainbow Fish has been able to uh, cultivate that brand uh, over the years. Over the years, yeah. That took like you've been with them. You know, only four years, but they've been around for uh, eight years now. Eight. Oh wait, sorry, it's their tenth year. Th- for ten years, yeah. imagine. <laughs> you know, so I, I just want to show that, like, and um, also that you know, growing something like that, like that kind of uh, a brand, even as well known as Rainbow Fish, it took years. Yeah, of course. <laughs> uh. Well, yeah, I think it would be best to talk to Nicolo. Actually. Yeah, for that, no? <laughs> for that. For when so he how, started. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we yeah. haven't mentioned Nicolo. Yeah, Nicolo Manriel is, is the one who you know, started Rainbow Fish together with his wife, Matad. Great people. Oh, yeah. And and I love it. I love them. I love working with them. Um, they're really, you know, generous people <laughs> really really nice and I, I feel like we're a family you know in the group it's not just all work we talk we talk daily actually <laughs> really yeah <laughs> like on viber or something on messenger like i talk to nicola almost every day because you know we have to talk about work and also other things of course to improve work and how we are uh, and to talk about life but yeah, they're, they're really good people. And um, I'm really grateful that I got into Rainbow Fish. And now um, I'm happy, happy to be one of the like, senior photographers and, and partner of Rainbow Fish. Mm. Okay. 
Well, I think we can um, end there. Ray, thank you for being so generous with your time. Thank you, Carlo, <laughs> for <laughs> having uh, me. I'll see you this afternoon yeah. for our show. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, wait. One last thing. Where can people find you? Oh, okay. Uh, well, for starters, you can find me uh, on Instagram uh, at Rayfus. It's R-A-E-F-U-S. And uh, for my food photography, it's Art Flavor Photography. On Instagram. On Instagram. And Facebook and also I have a website. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and for lastly, for Rainbow Fish, just uh, we're on rainbowfishphoto.com and in Facebook, Rainbow Fish Photography and Instagram, Rainbow Fish Photo. All right. All right. Any, uh, was that good? Do you want to, did we miss anything? Uh, I think we're good. Okay. <laughs>